All right, sports fans, welcome back to another episode of Pez's Picks. I'm Jeff Hartman, joined by Pez. Before we get started, a quick call to action. If you're listening to us on the audio side, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, give us a five-star rating. We do appreciate it. It does help. And also, if you're watching live on YouTube, all you have to do is like and subscribe to the Fans First Sports Network channel so you get all the latest and greatest around the world of sports. With that being said, let me bring in Pez. What's up, Pez? How are you? Exhausted, Jeff. I got numbers falling out of my ears. It's it's been a long week weekend. We got we got coming down to the end of the road to the playoffs. NBA college hoops has been insane. Everybody thought it'd be upset special. We've had no buzzer beaters. We we've had very few big upsets. I mean, Oakland was nice, but that ran out of gas. And chalk is winning this tournament, which uh, goes against everything we saw in the regular season. The worst performance ever in college basketball for top 10 ranked teams and they're kicking ass in this tournament jeff so i don't know what happened i don't know if you know if we're, maybe the the moon and the stars are aligning or something but uh, the best teams are left in this tournament and, and you know the number ones are playing like number ones and so uh, you know some things were predictable others weren't and we, we got some good numbers going into this weekend for sure Absolutely. And let's let's go back to last week, though, before we take a look at this week and look at Thursday and Friday's games of this week. Let's go back to Thursday and Friday of last week. So we took three games on Thursday, finished with a two and one record to recap Oregon and South Carolina 11 seed over the six Gamecock South Carolina Oregon wins. And they were even getting a point. NC State and Texas Tech NC State 11 seed Texas Tech six seed. NC State wins, and they were getting five points. The game that killed us, though, on Thursday was Kansas and Samford. Kansas did not play well. They were spotting seven points. Samford kept it close. They did not cover. That was the lone loss. Pez, what were your thoughts on Thursday's action? Well, 11-6 and six does it again, Jeff. I mean, we're talking yeah. about a, a matchup that is gambling gold. Um, you know, you, you bet that every year, you're going to stay ahead a little bit, and Kansas, uh, I'd, I'd like to go back and erase next week's episode off of the uh, the internet here. <laughs> Apparently, when you lose an All-American, it does hurt your play a little bit. So uh, check minus for me in that one, Jeff. The Jayhawks, uh, they they limped a little bit. And, yeah, you know, unfortunately, you know, that, that team had some injury bugs. And probably starting the year was the best and most talented team. And, you know, injuries are injuries. I, I, had, a, I had a lacrosse coach I knew in college, a famous guy here in New Jersey. Uh, they named the league after him, Risk, the Risk Lacrosse League up in North Jersey. He told me one time, there's two things you can't control in sports, the weather and injuries. So poor Jayhawks, maybe next year. Uh, but I, I love NC State, Jeff. That's an 11 seed that you know we're going to be talking about soon. And that team is hot. The ACC performed great, which is yeah. not a shock to me. That's a fantastic Power 5 league and Power 5 conference. And I'm happy for him. I love NC State. Jimmy Valvano, you know, legendary guy, and you know, they're mm-hmm. they're they're looking to make magic happen again. I think they're going to be uh, having a good weekend this weekend. So yeah, we finished two and one. I'm watching the scores on Thursday. I'm keeping track of our picks. I'm like, okay, two and one's a good start. So let's move to Friday. We had four picks on Friday, and we end up hey break even two and two. Longwood in Houston. Houston was spotting twenty four and a half. They cover. We get the cover. win. Uh, Stetson and UConn, UConn spotting 26 and a half. They cover, we get the win. JMU, Wisconsin, Wisconsin's giving five and a half in the James Madison Dukes. I believe that's their, uh, their mascot, the Dukes. They went outright. Pez, what were your thoughts on James Madison? I thought the third string punter from 1987 would have given you some insight. He did. And, uh, he rammed it down my throat. Uh, you know, he's, he's also a golf pro and, uh, he, he wore that obnoxious purple, uh, all weekend. I, I think, I don't think he watched it, Jeff JMU coming on. I mean, look at this team finally cracking into big time college football. Great year. Great, great basketball season. It's a nice campus. I, I, I spent a weekend there partying back in the nineties and it's a good time. And that, that's a hell of a university and Good for them. It's good to have these teams that are popping up and they're being consistent across the board and not just in one sport. And I'm happy for those Virginians down there. I mean, that you know, they're Confederates to us Yankees up here in Jersey, but we're still friends, Jeff. I'll, <laughs> I'll be friends with the golf pro. Uh, but yeah, that that team had a good weekend, and and that that's a great finish. And, you know, when you the gold medal of gambling obviously is winning money. The silver is breaking even, Jeff. When you 
when you roll four bets out, you can go 0 and 4. 0 and 4 is, uh, you know, that's when you test positive for steroids. Uh, a bronze would be, you know, maybe one loss. So 2 and 2, we'll take a silver. And I, I talked about it with a lot of people this weekend. Uh, this college basketball tournament is insane. Gambling was harder this year than it's ever been. Everything that was predicted did not happen. The favorites came through. The number ones played great, and and that's a that, that's a bonus for college basketball. The seeding apparently was correct, and we're seeing the cream rise to the top, and that, that's a good thing for college basketball, and good good thing for the rankings, and it bodes well for the tournament. I think we have to see buzzer beaters this week. Kind of a boring tournament so far, right? I mean, Oakland was fun. Guy hits 10 threes, and, you know, that, that team a little bit of a, a, a glimmer of a run, but we, we need some buzzer beers. We had – I can't remember the game. We had one force in overtime. Was that Houston, I think, on, on Saturday think so. or Sunday? So, but, but we need some buzzer beers. We need some magic back in this tournament a little bit. You know, it's kind yeah. of been chalk. Chalk is boring. We're, we're, we're going to – you know, but we're laying on the chalk a little bit, Jeff. So, I'm getting a little bit worried. I'm talking myself out of these bets a little nah, bit. Nah, you'll be fine. Let's talk about the last game that was a loser for us. <laughs> as 11-6. and six. We went with the 11-6, and six, and New Mexico did not come through. Clemson wins, and that's how we finished 2-2. Two and two. But on the weekend's picks last week, you know, we always say if you're on the winning side of things, you should be fine. We finished four and three with seven selections last Thursday and last Friday, and we are going to deliver more picks for Thursday and Friday this week. Pez, any other thoughts on last week before we move ahead? Fun weekend there, Jeff. I mean, the college basketball, I watched more of this past weekend than I watched all year. Uh, I, I think it's a better product than the NBA puts out. You, you can hand check in college basketball. You can actually play defense. Coaching was great. It was nice to see Kentucky lose. Uh, you know, I'm not a John Calipari fan, and and that team had blue chips all over, and they got smoked, Jeff. And that yep. coaching matters, like probably, you know, like like it doesn't matter as much in the NBA. Coaching matters in college basketball. Uh, the The Oakland team, I went to bed thinking Oakland, California won that game. Jeff, woke up in the morning. That's Oakland, Michigan. Who knew there was an Oakland, Michigan? Guy got, <laughs> the guy's been there 46 years, 10 threes. A uh, little bit of a disclaimer on that game, though, Jeff. That was his sixth college year, that guy that hit those 10 threes. So I don't know what's happening. College used to be four years. I wonder when you know we're out of this COVID kind of extra five, six years. I, I, I think we're going to start seeing a little bit more return to normalcy in, in college basketball and probably college football a little bit too but but power to that team that was fun and you know the time to buckle up for this weekend uh sweet 16 is tough we've got some preliminary data jeff and you know i've got i've got some numbers coming in from the infamous uh gambler uh known as the action man the only man i know that has ever gambled on the cricket jeff which is a shocking thing to gamble on but he did it um Sweet 16 favorites, eight or more favorites. So if you're laying eight points or more, uh, a favorite's laying eight points or more in a Sweet 16 game, they are on a shocking 26, eight, and three on the under run. So we're not putting an under out there. I, I don't bet uh, many totals in college basketball, but that is a, 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 pretty, a pretty good indicator that, you know, Sweet 16 favorites that are big, big favorites, eight or more points. Yeah. They're locking teams down, and and they're going on to probably cover the spread, and they're they're holding those teams that that they're big favorites to to a, to a small scoring percentage, and you know we're going to make some bets on that, but but if you like betting totals, I I talked to Legs about this. Legs started shaking a little bit, Jeff, and you know he likes when we give him these numbers. Uh, nine seed or higher since 2012. So if it's a any any game where there's a nine seed or a higher seed playing. They are 17-8-1 against the spread, and and that is a pretty uh, – an 8-18 eight and to the under. So nine seed or higher is a good bet going into this weekend. Um, one versus four seeds or 9-4-1 against the spread in the, in the nine tournaments, in the last nine tournaments. So one v four, uh, you got to take the one seed, and, and that's a good indicator on what we're looking at this weekend. And, you know, we're, we're always looking for advantages. Uh, Teams coming off big upset wins, two of them as a dog, or are, uh, are seven and zero against the spread. So we're looking at uh, NC State, you know, having some good numbers this week. Uh, we've got a lot of good data on the teams that we're picking, and 
And I, I, I like our chances this week, Jeff. And it's, it's a fun, fun, fun sweet 16. I mean, you know, you got nighttime basketball. And, you know, what else are we doing in March? I mean, there isn't much else going on right now. No, not until the Masters. And we'll talk about that, oh, I'm sure, yeah. at the end oh, of the yeah. show. But <laughs> let's, uh, let's take a look at the games on Thursday that we're taking. Let's start with. A, a team that's very close to your heart. That would be the libido play of the week. That's Arizona Wildcats versus the Clemson Tigers. Six seed Clemson versus number two, Arizona, Arizona spotting seven. You say, as we all should not be shocked, those that follow Pez's picks, you're saying take the Wildcats. Jeff, the, the wife had on the tube top down in the lovely town of Cape May, took her down for lunch on Saturday. It turned out to be a big winner, Jeff, uh, in, in a lot of different ways. Uh, <laughs> we, we got a lot of fanfare from people cheering her on. Uh, Things were bouncing, Jeff, and, and Arizona love this team. I believe Charles Barkley picked them to be the national champion, as I did. Uh, a big, big lineup. And that's something you don't see in basketball much anymore, especially in the NBA. So long players, big rebounding team. When we look at the data against Clemson, Arizona coming in third in the country, uh, just under 88 points a game. Clemson, 77 points a game. Big indicator for us. Uh, Arizona, a, a a legit, legit national champion team. Uh, big assist team, 18, 18, point, uh, 18 assists a game. I love them this week. I, I think that, you know, is, is borderline knocking on our lock of the week, Jeff. I love them. I love the way they're playing. Uh, you know, tough to say a team's, you know, you, you're picking a hot team. All these teams are hot if they're in the Sweet 16. But Arizona is hot. They're consistent. Turn the ball over, very rare. Uh, control the pace of play and, and their size is starting to wear teams down going further in this tournament. I think we're going to look to see that going forward with Clemson. Well, let's hope Clemson doesn't burn us again. They burned us last week after we took New Mexico and they didn't pull through. So let's hope Clemson uh, follows suit and Arizona wins and moves on. But you got Arizona minus seven, take the Wildcats. Let's go to another high seed. We actually took two one seeds, which this jives with the data that you got from the action man. Uh, San Diego State, number five seed against number one, UConn. UConn's giving 10 points. You say take the Huskies no matter what. Uh, UConn probably played better ball than any team last weekend, Jeff. Their, their defense is a stunningly tight defense. Uh, but but looking at this, at this matchup, uh, we're, we're kind of close in numbers. UConn a little bit better offense, scoring about four or five points more. Both teams are a very good defense, so – that under looks really good in this game. I'm, I'm not going to put that out as a play for us, but uh, that's a logical play to put in. Uh, 28th team in the country, San Diego, 66 points a game they're giving up. And UConn, is a, just, they're just shutting teams down, 63 points a game. You know, as we talk about, we're always looking for a little bit of advantage, Jeff. The advantage that we see with this game, and UConn, this is going to be a, you know, a, a telling thing going forward, I mean, averaging nine turnovers a game. San Diego, 11 turnovers a game. That doesn't sound like a lot, but, I mean, we're talking potentially four to six points there on turnovers alone. Uh, a, a bit of an assist advantage as well. 18 and uh, just under 19. Third in the country, UConn, in assists. So, And we're only looking at 13 assists for San Diego. So they move the ball around UConn. They control the clock. They get a lot of guys involved. I, I think UConn's going to be overwhelming in this game. And, and I think that, you know, we're looking at them pushing into this weekend and getting to that final eight for sure. All right. And so then the other one seed that we're taking, the UNC Tar Heels, who are coming off of a good weekend, they're going up against number four, the Alabama Crimson Tide. You like the number one seed. UNC is giving four and a half, but you say take the Tar Heels in this matchup. You know, again, you know, both teams are hot. I mean, Alabama, it's probably the best ball they've ever played in school history, but. Carolina is smooth. Every every cog is is moving and clicking. Uh, they're playing their best basketball of the year, North Carolina. And like we talked about earlier, the ACC is the best basketball conference, in my opinion. You're battle tested. I mean, those battles with, with Duke and Carolina. I believe we had Carolina. You know, when we we won that game. It, when you're playing Duke twice a year, you're playing NC State. You're you're playing Virginia. You're, you're playing Georgia Tech. You're battling every single night. I don't think the SEC has that, that quality of basketball. I think this game, we're going to see the ACC come out on top again. Uh, Alabama, though, very, very good offense. Uh, averaging number one in the country right now. Averaging almost 91 points a game, which is a pretty shocking number in college basketball. When we look at the data, though, uh, Carolina should bring that point total down, holding teams to 70 a game. 
when you're an ACC team and you're holding point teams to 70 a game, you're phenomenal defense. Uh, I actually think that that – that, that number, if they're in any other league, is probably, you know, they're probably looking at UConn number 60, you know, one, 62 points a game. So I look for Carolina's defense to to put their will in this game, make Alabama earn their points. And and I think at the end of the day, battle-tested Carolina is going to come out on top. Another – we look at it just like interceptions we talked about last week, Jeff. Turnovers are betting kryptonite in college basketball or pro basketball. Uh, Carolina – ball protects the ball 10 10 turnovers a game over 12 turnovers a game for Alabama when the pressure's on I can see that number jumping up to 14 or 15 turnovers uh great coaching in Carolina and they've been there you know players that have been there teams that have been there handle this stress Alabama had their best basketball weekend ever they've had four days to think about that five days to think about that that's a lot of that's a lot of things to think about when you're going back to college too Jeff and uh you know I'd like to think that these guys are being responsible. But then again, Jeff, I've been to college. I hope they're out partying. I know they were, right? Alabama, they got back to that campus, Lusa or whatever the heck they call that town. They probably, they probably tore it up all weekend. So everybody's walking, congratulating them, pressure's building. Carolina, I mean, this is nothing. Sweet 16 to them probably is a failure year. That, that team's got to get to the Final Four to actually you know, make, a, yeah. make a pinpoint in history. And I like Carolina a lot in this game. So Thursday, we take all favorites as we like Arizona, UNC, and UConn on Thursday night to win and advance to the Elite Eight. Let's go to Friday, I though. Think that's, I think that's three best teams, uh, too, Jeff. I think we're taking yeah. the three best teams left from the tournament. Uh, Houston, you know, looked like, you know, a little bit got exposed. Purdue a little bit as well. So I love these three teams, and uh, I'm not going to be shocked if all three cover. And, you know, Pez's picks, we look for – we look for a three and donut. I mean, that you know, a Dunkin' Donut on the zero side for the lost column. We're going to take that all day, Jeff. All right. So Friday is where we're going to find our first upset, and that is with NC State, who is getting six points against Marquette 11. The 11 seed NC State and number two Marquette. You like NC State. You just mentioned that when we talked about last week's picks. You're riding them again. What's your thoughts? ACC, Jeff. You know, and this team is smoking hot. Um you know, came in a, a higher seed and probably, you know, didn't deserve that. Probably deserved a higher seed being an, a, an ACC team that had a lot of success this year. When we look at the data, things are pretty close. I mean, we're, we're giving up a point or two on each side, offense, defense. Uh, when we look at all the data, whether it be turnovers, whether it be assists, uh, that tells us something a little bit. Well, you know, why is this line how it is? I, I think NC State, the better team, more battle tested. Uh, you know, th- this is another team that's played Duke, Carolina. I mean, they played the big dogs all year. And, you know, and I, I think Marquette you know, doesn't have that type of schedule. They don't have that type of, of lineup. And I think we're going to see NC State kind of push their will underneath. Good team underneath. They got some power. I love NC State. We're riding this ACC thing. Okay, so NC State, even though they are 11 seed going against a two seed and they're getting points, we're saying take NC State. The last second and final game on Friday that we're going to be taking, we like the number one seed Purdue Boilermakers who are giving five against the five seed Gonzaga Bulldogs. You like Purdue. Tell me why. Well, Jeff, sometimes the data goes against what the line says. You know, and this is something, you know, that, you know, that, that in the gambling world we look at and, you know, to, to, to some people, they're going to look at data and they're going to say, Hey, you, you got to ride the numbers. You know, you can't do that. Um, it, sometimes you got to look at why is Vegas going against what the data says. The data says Gonzaga is a better team. Gonzaga is averaging 85 points game, seventh in the country. Purdue only 83. Gonzaga is holding teams to 68 points a game. Purdue's holding teams to 69 points a game. So quick math. You know, there's no reason why Purdue should be laying five. Uh, when we look further into the data, dead even, Jeff. Uh, actually, Purdue turning the ball over two more times. Uh, you know, ab- about even, assists, rebounds, steals, blocks. So so when I see something like that, and I, I, I look at all this data, and, you know, we punch into our algorithm, turnovers, points for, points against. Why is Vegas laying five then, right? They, they don't give charity, Jeff. I remind people all this all the time. I had a guy tell me, you see Gonzaga's line, you know, you, you're looking at their points. And I said, yeah, but they're not giving you a gift. This isn't saying, well, we want people to bet Purdue. That's not how it works. They set that line on who they think is going to win the game, what they think that total point's going to be. 
They do not set lines to try to push bets uh, unless millions of dollars come in. And that, you know, that's not happening, especially for Washington, Gonzaga, Bulldogs. So for, for me, this screams Purdue is at a significant advantage in this game. Gonzaga does not have the schedule, does not have the, 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 the Big Ten powerhouses that, that they're playing in Purdue. And I think the Boilermakers, this could be a blowout, Jeff. I, I would actually look at a money line possibly in this game too if, if you want to roll the dice and, and give a little bit more of a bigger VIG. Uh, and, you know, and we, we love to look at the data. Sometimes you go against the data, Jeff, and that's a confusing thing to say and it kind of sounds hypocritical. But I think in this game, all indicators point to Boilermakers being the dominant team, dominant lineup, and, and th- those numbers should match up and, and should equal out by the end of the game. I think they blow this team out by double digits. All right, so let's recap our Thursday and Friday picks here on Pez's Picks. Thursday games, take the Arizona Wildcats over Clemson, take the UConn Huskies over San Diego State, take the UNC Tar Heels for, over Alabama on Friday Take the NC State Wolfpack over the Mar- over Marquette, and then take Purdue over Gonzaga. So, any final thoughts on these picks, Pez? Well, you know, I, I think chalk is going to is going to walk through again. Uh, you know, I think the number ones are solid bets. Houston kind of showed me a little bit, and I, I like that team a lot. But we're going to lay off of them. I like that under number a lot, Jeff. But that's a minefield when you get in totals. When we're talking foul shots and. You know, I try to prevent my heart attacks and, and my cardiac arrest to a minimum. When you bet totals, you are counting foul shots. You're you're counting stupid plays. You're counting garbage time, Jeff. There's nothing worse than when you're betting basketball and they empty the bench and you get that guy that never gets in the game and he lights it up for three threes with two minutes to go and the crowd's going crazy. Uh, you know, so tread lightly on that. Stick with your data. Stick with what you're you're going with and. And have fun with it. Don't chase your money, Jeff. That's a, that's a big gambling rookie mistake in this in this March Madness. I keep saying it. Stick with what you like. Do not chase your money on those late night games. That's what Vegas wants you to do. That's why they stagger those times, right? They want the guys sitting there drunk, betting the nine forty game, trying to win it all back and doubling down. Dumb bet. I talked my man legs out of that last week. Uh, you know, I I don't think he has any money anyway, Jeff. It's March. The beach, you know, the beach is about to open. Uh, he, he did have a good parlay, though, Jeff. Um, uh, the Legs has a, has a partner that he sets up these parlays with. Uh, his partner is a, a local bartender, uh, a middle-aged uh, black-and-white photo model. He only does black-and-whites, Jeff, which is a remarkable skill. All right, so here's the parlay that they have. North Carolina, money okay. line. They're going to take the North Carolina money line, Houston, money line Creighton laying two and a half and they're going to take the under in the Creighton game yeah let's let's have a disclaimer here this is legs's parlay this is not this is legs Pez's parlay. parlay yes this do not, not do now don't think this is Pez's picks this is legs you're just reading off what he's saying well we're giving a legs parlay and Jeff legs is getting so big that the CEO of FFSN sent me a little swag bag to, to send over to legs to, to, I mean, we're sponsoring legs. I think we're going to send him some meals on wheels. Uh, the guy's excited for, for his swag and his Pez's pick swag. So he's bound to hit one though, Jeff. And you know, Creighton's not a bad play. Uh, you know, and these, this, this, this looks good. I mean, I'm not a huge parlay guy, but I'm going to be cheering for him, Jeff. And yeah. you know, I hope for him, he's, he's going to stop eating dog food. If he hits this one, Two more weeks, we'll be back on the beach. We'll get them off in unemployment checks, and things will be back to normal for leg. <laughs> hey, you have any uh, golf plays this week for the Houston Open? So, Jeff, I, I, I've got some golf uh, some golf thoughts this week. Um, yeah. Scotty Scheffler, obviously. Plus you know, 270. It, it's, a, it's a sensible bet, Jeff. He's a Texas guy. Texas golf, as you know, is, is a very difficult golf. It, I've been to Texas. There's nothing in Texas but wind. And barbecue food. So you have to be a low ball hitter. You've got to be able to control the ball. At a, uh, if you're not a golfer, some golfers hit it a mile in the air. Tiger Woods, Rory McIlroy hit that ball in 200 feet in the air. Texas golfers grow up playing in the wind. They can hit a ball 300 yards. And, you know, it's about eight feet off the ground. you got to be able to have that shot and that swing. So I'm not going to go with Scheffler. It seems too easy. Uh, you know, and I mean, if his putter's hot, that guy's going to win every week anyway. I've got some long shots for us. Okay. Cam, Cam Davis from Australia. Uh-huh. Solid 
Fed, probably a huge long shot. I don't have his odds in front of me right now. Australia, same exact conditions as Texas. It's a weird place. It's windy. I got a real long shot. I'm going to put in a top 20 bet for a journeyman, a, a, a student of the game, Podrick Harrington of Ireland. He's playing in this? He is playing in this. <laughs> that guy still hits a ball. He still scores in British Opens. I mean, he is a fit yeah. guy. He's making it big on the internet. He claims if you watch all of his golf videos, he can make you a scratch golfer, which means you're uh, below 10. Uh, a single-digit handicap is what he claims. And, you know, I'm trying, Jeff. It hasn't happened for you yet, but I love my Irishman. I think Padraig <laughs> Harrington, top 20. Nice play. Uh, guy is fit. He's a young, probably, I don't know, what's he, 60, Jeff? So yeah. low ball hitter. And, you know, a guy that's not a, a long shot that I think has a really good chance, another Aussie. Jason Day, guy hits a low ball. He, he's been scoring well. That guy's bound to win this year. His numbers are, are phenomenal this year. Uh, one of the best, probably top 10 guys statistically this year and hasn't had a win. So I love Jason Day. Uh, I, I like watching this tournament. You know, and the, you know, we're jockeying for Masters positions. So there's a lot on the line for this week. Guys, yeah. are, guys are begging to get into that Masters. I know I would too best golf course in the world from what i read and you know it's a it's a fantasy to get to that course well it, last week i mean it, every week that you know the scotty scheffler doesn't play it's a freaking toss-up as to who's gonna win i the one guy so my i do the favorite and a long shot every week on my fairways and dreams podcast which by the way you want to hear the podcast that drops today thursday i rank with the rumors of happy gilmore 2 coming out i rank the oh. top golf I ranked the the top golf movies in my opinion of all times. So you got to check that out. But anyways, I actually had my favorite for Wyndham Clark. I loved how Wyndham Clark finished in the in the PGA, and then I see on the internet that he threw his back out this week, and that he could only chip and putt, and that he had to have all this work done just for him to be able to swing the club. So I cut him, and I went with Scotty at two seventy. I mean, I couldn't find anyone else that I liked. In that field, long shot, I went with Jake Knapp, a winner on the tour already this year. Sure. He won down in Mexico, plus 5,500. So I like Jake Knapp if you're going to you know, go for a long shot. I like that Knapp play. Uh, I watched his last round when he won. He did not have his A game. He started, <laughs> yeah. he started, punt, uh, you know, and I, I have he had this a 13 kind of shot on 18 at Sawgrass. Well, he had a 13. Well, he came back with a little bit of a stutter, but when he <laughs> won that first tournament on that Sunday. He started hitting a punch drive, a low, yeah. I think it was about 265, 280 drive, kind of shot you need to win in Texas. It is a long course, so I think it's stretching out 7 to 400 plus yards. So wow. you got to have a little pop in the bat. You know, that's the only thing I worry about Podrick a little bit. But if the wind is up, these Europeans, these Australians, and these Texans are going to be dominating. The, the, data, the data says that. I, I don't know why Jordan Spieth's not playing. I didn't see his name on that list. He typically plays in the Valero, which is next week, the Valero Texas Open. A lot of guys right. use that for the run-up to the Masters. He normally plays in that one. Hey, I have a special for you as well. Scotty Scheffler to win, Will Zalatoris, Wyndham Clark, which I'm very hesitant about Wyndham Clark, and Sahith the Gala to finish in the top 20. It's plus 2,600 if, that, if all that happens. Uh, you, you bet on those guys every day of your life, you're going to win one of these days, right? I mean, you're talking about <laughs> some of the best guys in the world. I read he back out in the gym he heard something pop i don't know i watched that in netflix special jeff that that windham's had a tough go of it uh, i root for him i mean he's got a on course uh, mental health counselor that walks with him guy the guy can hit the ball though i think when his yeah. head's right he's a top five golfer and you know I, I i like that you know the pga is making a comeback here and to hell with those live guys jeff goodbye i'm not going to worry about you anymore i think john rom is regretting his decision yeah. And again, I think he got four hundred million dollars. So maybe not, Jeff. Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> hey, for uh, me, I that's why I like the Masters. Get all these guys together. Let's have the drama. I love it. I absolutely well. Love it. And, and uh, our our Manchester United game last week, Jeff, got postponed, which is oh. you know a weird thing we do in England. So we're still taking Man U plus one twenty against Brenton this week. Uh, you know, there's a lot of action in, in European soccer. They postpone it. things. It's a lovely culture over there. They 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 postpone for weather occasionally for. For what have you, Jeff? So uh, I like Manchester United with Brenton. Now I'm still on that bet. So we're going we're right. to ride that thing. Good stuff. Uh, what's little your, what's NBA, your... yeah, little ahead, NBA, uh, NBA, Orlando Magic covering 67% of their games, Jeff. A shocking number. I like the Lakers. 
Uh, I would play the Lakers, and I know LeBron's a little bit banged up, but the Lakers are playing the best ball of the season. They're closing to make the playoffs. I love them. I am selling the Sixers right now, Jeff. West Coast swing, beat up, tired team. I would bet against the Sixers. Celtics and Bucks are coming on, and we're going to have a lot of fun betting the end of the season. And, and, college, and NBA as college basketball kind of runs down here. Absolutely. Any final thoughts on this week? Well, I'm, I'm pumped, Jeff. Another fun weekend. Uh, you know, I hope everybody has a great Easter. I'm going to be uh, sequestering myself back up in the mountains. I got to get my got to get my abacus back out. We're going to get back to basics. We get ready for the Final Four, and we, we got to get ready for this NBA uh, playoffs. It's it's a tough one. You got to really punch yeah. the data in the NBA. You got to you got to look for road away advantages, home advantages, injuries, and you know we're going to be punching the numbers up there in the Green Mountains. So we'll be coming we'll be coming at everybody uh, Wednesday from the mountains somewhere, Jeff. I'm not sure where. Yeah. Might head over to that Patriots and you know see what's going on. Fishy circumstances in that New England Patriots. I don't know who, who's playing quarterback on that team. I don't know. I don't think they know either, and that's a problem. But that does it for Pez's picks. Let's hope we have a great week of picks. And uh, Pez, as always, thanks for your time, man. We'll talk next week. Talk next week. See you, Jeff.